Today we're looking at the fundamentals of how to use Autodesk Inventor. Now the first thing I want you to do is double click Autodesk Inventor which will load up the program. Now I highly suggest you be using a mouse in this, using this program because it's a lot easier to pan and pivot. Now last lesson we talked about how to create an earphone organizer um, project. Now this project should come up in the recent files on your right hand column here. Once that comes up, you just click on that and then go up to the top and press new. New. And then what we want to do is select metric. Then we want to go standard I standard in millimeters IPT, which is our standard part file. And we'll click create. From here we want to start a new sketch, you always must begin with a sketch before you can extrude or revolve or fill it or add a hole. So we're going to start a new sketch. Now these are the three planes which make up a three dimensional drawing. We're going to start with the XY plane. This is the front view for the XY plane. From here we're going to select line. Now before we begin it's very important if you ever get stuck in this tutorial the most common command to escape something is simply by pressing escape a few times and if you go too far or you make a mistake you can always press ctrl z which is undo ctrl z so i'm going to start with the line and it's going to lock on green there at the center axis select there i'm just going to come just above horizontal click there now you can see i'm panning here to be able to pan you need to click down your scroll button and hold it. So press your scroll button, hold it, and you should all be able to pan. Now let go of that, and the line should still be continuing. We'll draw another line up, which isn't quite vertical. From here, we'll actually go back to that point, and we'll left click and hold, and we'll actually create an arc. I'm still holding my click button. Once I've got an arc, which I like, I'll then let go. I'm going to do another line down there. One more across. One more up. Back across to the, just before that vertical line. And then back to the origin. Now before I continue any further, during this tutorial, I think the best way which I find to do it is to play the video and then pause it complete a few steps and then go back to the video. You might find there's a better way for you, but personally that's um, the best method I find for following tutorial. So once you've done all this, the next step from here is we're actually going to constrain it. So as you can see at the moment, all the lines are green. Now this program is called a parametric drawing program, which means that it requires constraints to function. There are two types of constraints. One you're probably familiar with, which is dimensioning. So that adds a dimension to make that line know exactly how long it is. And the other types of constraints are geometric constraints, and they are up here. For example, um, we can create a geometric constraint on this line, making it vertical, or this line creating it horizontal. So we're actually going to start with geometric constraints. Um, they're the preference to use because um, they have more flexibility when you get further on in the drawing. So for this line here, I want this one to be horizontal. So if you come up to here, now ever, if there's any point in time where you can't figure out what a certain command is, just hover over it and let go, and then it will load a little description, which is very handy. This one's a horizontal constraint. So I'm going to click that. And then I'm going to go over this green line and select that green line. As you can see there, it actually created that line and now it's a dark blue. Now that means that line's constraint and it won't move. So there's two other horizontal lines. If you can see it, please go ahead and try it. And there's another one. And I'm not sure why it didn't work the first click. And that's another line too. Now I've got a few vertical lines that I want to constrain, so if I go to the one next to the horizontal one, click vertical constraint, I'm going to select that one, select this one, uh, that one already has a vertical constraint, and that one does too. 
So as I drew this, these three lines thought they were um, on the same um, plane or vertical plane. So once I change this one, these ones changed also. So I'm also just going to change that one to a vertical. Now that I'm left with this arc, now anytime you want to see the, the range of movement left and you're not sure why it's still green and why you can't lock it on purple, you can grab that line and simply drag it and see what direction it wants to move and how you can constrain it. So if we start with this line here, it only wants to move up and down. So I'm actually going to add a dimension now to this one. And I'm going to click the top line, and that bottom line, and slide it across. They're going to make that 15. Enter. So you can see now this top line is now constrained. I'm going to do something similar. So we're going to grab the next line. Uh, we can see that it's moving this direction. So I'm going to constrain that dimension. I just click that line this time. Drag it up and I make that five millimeters. I'm simply pressing on my keyboard and then pressing enter. Now this line here, again, it's moving up and down. So what I'm going to do is go dimension. I'm going to click on here, drag that across and type in six, enter. Still got a few more, so this one here is changing here. Now I'm actually going to add a radius or constraint on this one. So I'm going to click dimension again, click the arc, and I'm going to change that to five millimeters. So let's constraint that like that. Now it's still moving here, and if we can see here, this actually isn't um, doesn't flow very nicely like over here. If you can see, this line flows up and then curves along nicely. It's actually got this constraint called a tangent constraint, and that's what gives it that nice curve. Well, I want the same effect on this side, so I'm going to come up here to tangent. I'm going to select tangent, then I'm going to select the arc and this line. And you can see there, that created a nice equal tangent. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to dimension this line here. I'm going to make that 8 millimeters. Then you see it still is green. So what's the trick to figure out why it's still green? Excuse me. Click and drag. So we can see the only movement it's performing at the moment is left and right. So if you want to have a think about it and try and dimension that before this video plays on. And then it's actually this line here. So we change it to 20. Now that'll stop it sliding left and right. I'm just going to add one more part to this drawing, which is a circle. And I'm just going to draw the circle over here just to illustrate another type of constraint, geometric constraint that is. Remember that's the constraints which require not numbers like a dimension, but a type of function. So I'm going to use a collinear, sorry, co-centric co constraint, which is at the top here. So what that does, again, I hover it over and it has a little description. As you can see on the left here, it has a drawing of, oh, can't move my mouse, it has a drawing of a circle and an arc, and then to the right it has a drawing where that arc and that circle has the very same center point, which is the dot in the middle, whereas the drawing on the left has two dots showing a different center point. So that's what I want. I want this circle to be in the very center of this arc. So I select the circle, then I select the arc, or the other way around, and there we have it. We have it in the middle. Now there's just one more constraint, and you can see there, it doesn't know what size it wants to be, so I'm going to click Dimension, select that, and I'm going to make that 4 millimeters. And there we have it. We've had a fully constrained first drawing, so then I'm just going to click Finish Sketch. Now the last part of this video is we're going to extrude. So we're going to come up to the extrude button, select extrude. And then if you see we hover over here, it actually we can actually select just this external part. If we wanted that circle to be also solid, we can select that. But I actually don't want it to be solid, so I actually hold control down. And you can see that circle pops up again, and I'm going to click that circle.
Now then the last thing for me to do is actually add a dimension to the distance I want to extrude this object. So I'm going to extrude it 12 millimeters and then press enter. Now again I'm using the pan so I'm holding down the scroll button and I'm moving it around. If you wish to pivot and pan at the same time, you just need to hold shift at the same time and then at the same time holding your scroll button down and moving your mouse. And that's how you pan and pivot at the same time. Well, that's the end of the first video. Thank you very much, and we'll wait for the next one.